Hi. So in this brief mini lecture, I want to explain the brain and the vat thought experiment. This is a contemporary thought experiment, which was originated in 1973 by Gilbert Harmon and later further developed by philosopher Hilary Putnam. As we'll see, however, this thought experiment is not in some ways especially original because it echoes many of the concerns raised by earlier philosophers such as Descartes and going all the way back to Plato. So the brain and the vat work something like this. Imagine that there's a person, this could be you, it could be me, it could be somebody else, and let's, for the sake of argument, say the person has fallen asleep. And let's now imagine that somebody comes into their room, unbeknownst to the person because they're asleep, and let's say that they provide them with some kind of medication so that they're not going to wake up at all, and they start sawing open the person's head, and they remove their brain, and they put their brain inside a vat or a jar, for which reason this experiment is sometimes called the brain in the jar. Now, I know what you're thinking, this is a little weird, and in and of itself this is not all that philosophically interesting. But let's further hypothesize that the brain can continue to exist inside this vat or jar because it's hooked up to, say, some blood supply and it's given whatever brains need in order to keep them alive, okay? Again, you might think, well, this is pretty strange, but, you know, where's the philosophical oomph, if you will? Where's the philosophical uh, nugget of concern here? Well, let's develop this a little further. Let's take the hypothesis that the brain is basically a neural net that runs on a kind of electrical stimulation. And let's imagine that we could stimulate the brain using some kind of supercomputer. Now, this may sound very strange until you consider that in experiments done with brains, uh, including experiments that are done when people perform brain surgery when patients are awake, if you connect the brain or certain parts of the brain to electrical stimulation, you will produce certain kinds of experiences, like a person will see a red patch in front of them, or they'll, you might trigger some kind of memory or some sensation. Um, so assume that the supercomputer could do all of that. It would have this complex set of algorithms that could produce really essentially any experience we might want to have. So here are some evil guys sitting there in suits inside a uh, gigantic computer uh, lab. And their task is to trick the brain, and again, the brain could be you, it could be me, it could be somebody else, into believing any number of different things. So here's the brain. The brain's hooked up to a computer by millions and millions and millions of electrodes which are connected to you know, the complex neurological centers of the brain. So if they, that is to say, the evil guys in this picture, want the brain to feel like it's running outside, it's in the sun, then they will hit a certain number of keystrokes and that will produce those electrical stimulations, which will produce those experiences for the brain. If they want you to think that you're on the moon or climbing Mount Everest or having a great love affair, again, they could create any of those things. So the philosophical problem here arises as follows. Can you, given this thought experiment, prove that you are in fact not a brain in a vat? This is, in fact, the same kind of worry that Descartes had when he wondered whether or not he could know anything outside of his own consciousness. So you take the dream argument. If I can't know how to differentiate between waking and dreaming, then how can I really know that I'm actually awake now? Take Plato's worry in the cave. If all the prisoners in the cave, in pointing to their reality, will only be pointing to shadows on the cave wall or reproductions inside the cave rather than the reality outside, how can they actually claim to know what's real? So it's really the same worry. Now you might think, in the case of the brain of the fat, 
that we could easily disprove the brain of the vat. For example, right now, I'm looking at what looks like my left index finger, and I match it with my right index finger, and I think, okay, they look very similar to each other. Obviously, if I were a brain in a vat, I wouldn't have any index fingers, right? Because I'd only be a brain. I, I would be separated from my body. But I have clear evidence that I have index fingers, and therefore, I can't be a brain in a vat. But notice, that's not a very good argument, because the evil guys could actually produce electrical stimulation in my brain to make me think that I'm actually perceiving an index finger. So this poses a particular problem. If we're going to defeat the brain in the vat, we have to find some evidence that cannot be doubted. In other words, we can doubt that we have index fingers. We can doubt that we have a body. We can doubt that other people exist. So how can we actually prove that there's anything outside of our conscious experience? So the brain in the vat is, in a nutshell, a more recent version of this worry that goes all the way back to Plato's cave and Descartes' dream argument. Hope you enjoyed.